Welcome to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dear Alice. Today, we are going to be taking you into um, our second half of styling principles. We're taking you through five and 10. But first, we've got Sue Hall. Hey. We've got Corey Place. How's it going? On base. On base. Yes. And I'm Jess Bennett. And we are talking about styling this elusive white tiger in the sky that is so hard to pin down for so many people. And (laughs) it's hard to know, like, what are the rules? How do I do it? Mm -hmm. How do I make sure it looks good? You know? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. The eye often just tells us if it's good and like when to stop. Yeah, it is a feeling. feeling. It's inside your stomach and your head. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) It's very elusive. But um, we wanted to break it down so that you guys would have just the very best idea of how the pros do it. So we're on number five. We've gone through already. um, Editing was number one. Blank spaces is number two. Three is focal points. Four is shelf styling. And we're to number five and we're at lighting. So you're thinking lighting, what does that have to do with styling? Yeah. It has to do with styling because of this. We have um, a couple tricks in design that we love to do. The first one being the most obvious, but you'd be so surprised at how often this doesn't happen. It's to making sure that your lamps have light bulbs in them. (laughs) First of all, that you have lamps. And second of all, that you have light bulbs (laughs) in them. Amen. It sounds really obvious to those of you listening to a design podcast, but my brother sent me a Marco Polo the other day laughing his face off because um, he has tons of lamps. We've designed, I don't know how many houses of his and he doesn't have light bulbs in a one of them. He went through <laughs> his whole house and he would Marco Polo me every time he get to another one and he'd peek over the shade with his phone and no light bulb. He didn't put a light bulb in it, Jess. <laughs> These lamps are each like, he's, he's buying like nice lamps are each like a thousand dollars and they're not even being used. He just thinks that they're like a sculptural thing. His, his face has been lit by overhead lighting this whole time. Can you believe how- How un- is his mental health? I know. Honestly. So unromantic, yeah. right? Yeah. Anyway, so we have a designer on staff, um, Maddie, that was telling me about these light bulbs you can even buy on Amazon that come on. They can be the light bulb themselves can be programmed to come on at certain times a day. And so I was like, "Uh, I'm going to send you the link for these light bulbs. You're going to buy them and task one of your teenagers to put them in every lamp and to program them on their own phone on what time of day they should come on, which is probably like sunset. Mm -hmm. And then your whole house can be lit by lamplight and you turn off your overheads and it will just be this beautiful moody glow. All your relationships will be better. You guys, a house does not look better with overhead lights on. No. It looks worse. Especially at night. Holy yeah. smokes. There's nothing that makes me like less relaxed than that. And Mar- my wife, Mari loves it, but I'm, I go around just flicking all the lights Dude, off. I don't want any of them on. You can't take good pictures. Mm-hmm. Even when we're taking pictures in a client's home. All lights off, like you want natural light and nothing else because it just like, yeah, especially the overhead light. It's no bueno. And if your builder put in like blue daylight light bulbs, please change those out also oh, to a 27 Kelvin. Thank yes. you. So it's warmer. Anyway, we want warm light around our faces and in our lamps, especially yep. I think lamps are just so critical when like, and we kind of like when we're doing the furnishings of a home. We're picking out the lamps because it's a larger piece, right? Yeah. But it has a great deal to do with the styling and accessorizing, I think, of the home, the feeling that you get mm-hmm. when the lamp is on. Right? That's right. And if you can have them on dinners, kudos. That's awesome. Totally. Or Love turn on your dinner. fixture, your chandelier over the table. Yeah. Because that has light bulbs in it that are beautiful and glowy and it's different. It's at a closer level to you as a human than those, than those cans. So yeah. we just flip off the cans and we use all of our fixtures. Okay. And I have a, I have a tip right now too. When you are like, if you're building and you're doing all these things right now with your lighting, make sure your sconces are on, like in your bathrooms and you're like by your fireplace, the sconces are on their own switch, yes. you know, and that your overhead is on its own switch and that they do have a dimming option. Yep. Mm. So, because that's the most lovely, it's, it's such a bummer. When you flip on a switch and the overhead turns on with the sconce, you're like, I have no control. Like uh-huh. you just put handcuffs on me and like, I'm going to look terrible and yeah. I can't have any That's like, like really one singular tip. light. Mm-hmm. So yeah. If that is the case, your electrician can fix it. Yeah. That They wired that up something similar in my house. And I was like, that has to be those, that overhead lighting has to be on its own oh, switch. Oh man. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. I can't think of why we have the overhead lights other than to clean or maybe look for a, something, a sock under the bed or yeah. why do we have overhead lights? Guys, and, and like cans. A, why do we have cans? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know. I like, I love yeah. the central fixture on in my room and I love my lamps on, but really if we're, I'm watching TV or something, I turn off the, the central fixture, the chandelier and I just have my lamps on. Yeah. Yeah. If you look through like the most beautiful books and the most like grand estates, they don't really have them. Like, yeah. and if they do, it's like a really, like the very, very small cans and they're just like in a really minimal row. Not too many of them. Your electrician's going to want you to put them like every two feet. Like we're just like, no, like at least like four to six feet. Mm-hmm. But like an electrician loves a can. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't and be peer pressured. Totally. Into like too many cans. And then Ooh. when we get our shots back from a Social photo suicide, shoot, guys. You better believe we, we Photoshop all those cans out of the ceiling. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure so grateful do. in my 1970s <laughs> farmhouse, whatever, that they like, they just didn't give a rats and they didn't put any overhead lights. Yeah. Nice. And it's the best. And they didn't texturize too. Cause they're just ah, like, let's not do that. So smooth everything is smooth feelings. and like, just like painted nice and white and just, it's beautiful. Mm, anyway. So lucky. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> one one other that. point about lighting is there's a, a designer trick that we love called the baby lamp. Mm. It's a very small lamp. It's probably like, I don't know, eight inches tall. No. Eight to like, even like 14, you know, like, it yeah. was, but the one, I think the tiny Terry is like 10. Yeah. Visual comfort makes one called the tiny Terry. We also um, started manufacturing our own called penny lamp, the penny lamp, two different sizes. Yeah. So the little tiny size is so fun to tuck in a bookshelf. Um, If you obviously have a way to electrify it, if plug somewhere um, nearby that you can sort of hide the cord or I have the tiny or the penny lamp um, also on my floating kitchen shelf. Mm. And luckily I have a little outlet um, down in the corner of that backsplash where I can easily hide the cord and it's so beautiful. It's like my nightlight in the kitchen and I just keep that on all night, even though all the lights are off. So if I have a little low sugar incident, I can yeah, get up girl. in the night and there's a, like a nightlight on in there and it's just trip and so just pretty. Clog your way to the fridge. Mm-hmm. I can clog my way out a of midnight there. clog. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to clog too late at night because it wakes me up, Sue. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's very responsible of you. Yeah. And so I just take light steps to go and, <laughs> to go and manage steps. my low blood sugar. Thank light you. steps. No pun intended. Uh, that's yeah. Funny. So anyway, the, even in your kids' rooms, I think that that would be cute if you got the timed little light bulb that it just goes on, all the other ones go off so and cute. like, then it's just like this, like they know it's time to chill. It's time yeah. to calm down. They just have that one little lamp on in their bookshelf. Look at us. I we should design. We should have a podcast. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Um, okay. So that's lighting. Um, number six is organic. We want to see more organic objects in styling. Here's why. Because you're styling a surface that's flat. It's like a square. An, a kitchen island Solid is 90 a square. degree angles. The table has a squared off top, right? It's even if it's around, it's a flat top. So we have all of these, a bookshelf is a grid of straight lines. So we need to loosen up the vibe and it's going to look so magical if we can bring in those organic lines. Mm-hmm. So this should be number one. I know, honestly. We've got it down Jeez, on the always. list on number six. So oh. let's talk about how to bring in organic lines and shapes into styling. Yeah, I think on all the, like the table surfaces too, you want to know what my biggest pet peeve is, is when somebody puts frames on a console that you can see from both sides. So you see the spine or like that little kickstand of a frame, Yeah, you know, and it's not beautiful because it's meant to be directional. That's meant to be tucked away mm-hmm. into a bookshelf. When we talk about organic, it looks good from all angles. 360, it's beautiful. Plants, we like on a coffee table and like in most rooms we'll have like, at least one, one floral or one greenery or something to give life back. And you would not believe if you don't have this, if you go into a room and you don't have something living or something that's live and organic, um, I guarantee if you put something on your coffee table, be it a real plant or, you know, one of our faux plants or something, it's, it will be a game changer. Like honestly, if a room is flat, add either add a tree, a plant or zebra. I tell you what, it turns things around. Mm-hmm. But there's something about having just something, it's a plant that's like, it feels alive. It's sculptural, right? It's ever changing. The leaves are changing if it's real or it's, or actual, do actual sculpture, you mm-hmm. know, like we do this a lot on a coffee table. If like we have, you know, a stack of books and we have like a little object, be it a stone bowl 
or all those things are non-directional and they're interesting and they're molded and they look like an artisan touched it. Mm-hmm. That's what we also mean by organic that it just, it's feels it's, there's a fluidity to it. It's imperfect. It's imperfect. And all these structured lines need mm-hmm. that. And it's they not need the break generally non-directional and it looks good from all sides, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah. like even a lamp looks good from all sides, yes. right? It's not like flat on the back, which is why, you know what? I've found like in my last, in my latter years of designing is I don't like directional or lamps that have like a rectangular shade. I know. I don't do. I don't love them. I don't love, and I don't love a rectangular like base. I like, I need that non-directional. I need Mm -hmm. thing. And it's easier to style around them too. Cause like, it's just easier to tuck this here. And I don't like rectangle. I don't even like it on a sconce, even though I don't need to see the backside of it because it's up against the wall. Sometimes even on a console too, even though like you're up against the wall again, it's something so strict. Yeah. You need the softness. You need the organic. I agree. Agreed. Um, Okay. How do you feel about that, Corey? Yes, I totally agree. (laughs) Cool. I'm just a student (laughs) in this one. I feel like I'm just sitting back and yeah, listening. That's great. Number seven, creating a conversation. So... Mm -hmm. This is like um, going to the antique stores, the vintage stores to find items that have meaning or character, or they're going to take you back to that vacation that you were on so that you have evidence that you were alive and that you did that thing. Mm -hmm. Guys, I have have another another Iris quote. It's really good. She obviously is like the queen of collections. Like she uses it on her body. If you've seen her spaces, this is Iris Apple. Her spaces are just like ooey gooey nuga. Like just all the collections like layered on top. She's definitely a maximalist in every sense of the word. Um, this is a quote from her. She says, I'm a hopeless romantic. I buy things because I fall in love with them. I never buy anything just because it's valuable. My husband used to say, I look at a piece of fabric and listen to the threads. It tells me a story. It sings me a song. I have to get a physical reaction when I buy something, a bolt of lightning. It's a fun way. It's fun to get knocked out that way. <laughs> I love that. I like that. So She's much. so dope. That's so, great. Anyway, to this point, I'm just like collecting, you know, I think she does a beautiful job of like definitely like knowing herself and identifying to objects and things that like mean something to her, tell her story. And I think that that that's the best when we go into a client's home and they have a collection that they've already begun because they loved it so much or they experienced it in a foreign land. Um, the rooms become so much more magnetic when we have that to work with. Mm-hmm. We can bring objects, yeah, you know, but it doesn't mean much if it's not, if it doesn't have your story plastered to it. So even, even if that is the case, if you don't have a collection and we were to come in and style in your home, we'll bring base objects. We'll bring like the base layer story, but it's meant to evolve and it's meant to be added to with the things that you find that are interesting to you. Yes. But tell your story. I agree. And honestly, and these are the things that'll set you apart from your neighbor. This is, these are the things, the conversation pieces where people are going to be like, Oh my gosh, where on earth did you find that? I, I do this with all with art. A lot of people are like, where on earth did you get that frame? Like, it looks like it's from the bottom of the sea. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it starts a conversation and it allows you to just kind of elaborate on what you love, mm-hmm. you know, which I think I is so tell cool. You the stories about what you did on your travels or whatnot. Here's why I think traveling is such a great opportunity to buy things for your home is because you aren't on a schedule. You aren't trying to fit a million things in like you are at work where, you know, all of us in this room have kids. And so you're generally trying to juggle you know, your work with getting food inside those tiny bodies with Mm -hmm. doing bedtime situations. And there's just like not a lot of free time to shop. Mm -hmm. So if you do, you can't be super thoughtful about it because you got to hurry and do it on Amazon and swipe up and it's done. Right. Cause you're just trying to handle everything. Yeah. You're trying to handle it. We're like Olivia Pope on scandal and we're just trying to make sure everything's handled. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that traveling is such a great time to be able to have space in your brain to dream and to experience new things and to really consider what you want in your life as you go back to it. For some reason, um, my mom's going to get a kick out of this because she listens to all these podcasts, but hey, Polly. I just remember, <laughs> Hey mama, I just remember all of the times my parents would go on vacation and they come back and my dad will have purchased a new furniture set while they're <laughs> in another, in another state. And then it arrives and we're like, 
what on what on why would you buy furniture from another place but I think it's because they had the time yeah. and they're just like in this fun frisky shopping mood mm-hmm. that they're not in when they're home and they have all these responsibilities managing a household yeah. yeah and so every time something big and new or fun showed up I think mom, I feel like you bought a fur coat when you were somewhere. Good this for curly you. lamb. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Get it. Get it. Yeah. Some sort of my dad, I feel like brought home some funky boots and the, all these funny, they look so cute, all these they? crazy things came when, when dad was in another land and he just had the courage to dream and be something different for that moment. Something other than an eye doctor, you I, know? And I think when you travel, like that's when, especially like if you go with like your significant other and you're just like, oh yeah, like you're you and I'm me. And like, we fell in love and like, this is like, we're really fun. We're, we're, when we're parents, we're like the government. Yeah. We are the government and we're strict. (laughs) And like, and Tom, and Tom says that to Nolan. He's just like, I'm your government. Like if we go and he's being babysat, he's like, Nicole's your government tonight. Like, Uh but you become like, you know, an authority figure versus like when you are romantic and when you are just like, just meandering in a new city and seeing new things and being inspired. And it's, it's 100. It's my very favorite place yeah. to get, gather things. Yeah. What's the most favorite, what's your favorite collectible that you've ever got on a travel? That's what I was going to ask. I was going to ask examples of these because sometimes I feel like when you're like, you need to tell a story. Some people oh. just aren't creative enough to be like, so I think giving examples. Oh, I'm so excited for you guys to travel. Yeah. I yes, think, well, this is, this is kind of a little teeny tiny thing, but I think it's a good one because um, when we were in North Carolina, it was actually at market, but we always reward ourselves at some point in market and go to this really cool vintage store. That's, that's um, kind of off, off the beaten track of mar- market. It's called two and four modern. So any of you designers that are listening, you have to do this for yourselves and you can it's, follow them on Instagram too. Oh yeah. It's two really and four fun. Modern. Yeah. yeah. Follow them on Insta. Anyway, we always wander in there and it's always late at night that's and fun. we're, and our bodies are tired, but it's just so fun. Anyway, I wander in one year and I found this amazing pink candy dish. And it was like this hand blown, this Italian, Italian hand blown, yeah. pink crackly looking thing. And I was like, this is amazing. Like this is going to make an amazing gift. And I love giving gifts. And so that's what I was thinking. And I don't know, I probably only paid $30 for it or something. And I just was like, what a treasure. And I wrapped all my clothes around it. So it would stay safe in my suitcase and went home with it and I've just loved it. And then as we started to make product, I was like, I wonder if we could create the hand blown candy dish Mm -hmm. so that I could give it as gifts because I can't part with it now because I just love it so much. I love the shape. It's just very like 1960s or fifties. And you know, the fact that it's pink and it's got these big bull nose around the edge. And anyway, sure enough, Corey, went to work and special projects yes. figured out somebody that could hand blow glass for us. And we made it available to our collection and we've been able to replicate this favorite thing that I found in our travels. And now everybody gets to have this fun, this fun story and, and a candy dish in their house, which is, I don't know, maybe forbidden for some people to have candy laying out at all times, but it won't always be though. So cute. Like it's it is so beautiful, empty, yeah. but in an entry way, just to offer, you know, candy, you're like, well, you guys are fun. I know. <laughs> you know, I'm so excited right now. Again, like even if you're in a stage where you're not putting out candy right now, there will be a moment. And I think yeah. it is the most fun. Again, bowls are non-directional. Yep. Too, you mm-hmm. know, and so I think I feel like on every setting we usually have bowls of some sort, be it a sculpture or something to actually like contain something. Yeah. But I love that and I love that you you're such a she's an awesome gift giver. Jesse always like she's such a lover and she always gives the loveliest gifts. So I love that like you did this with the intention that you want to give them to all of your girlfriends. Yeah. Like that's why that's why she designed this. And I think that, that is such a good catalyst. That's actually a lot of our accessories too. I mean, it's stuff you're like, man, I've like found this at this, this unique item at the shop. And like, we need to like replicate it somehow or change these things about it. And so that's really cool that like our product is really your favorite things like reimagined. Totally. You know? We just barely did um, this brass hand. It's like the length of, of um, the spine of a book. It's a brass hand. It's an open hand on one end and a closed fist on the other. And it, if you have your book opened in our acrylic cradle, then this hand can lay in, in the middle, um, in the spine, or as my dad would say, in the crotch of the book, um, you could lay this hand in there kind of as a bookmark, you know, but it's just so fun to see this little brass object. 
And I picked one up like 20 years ago. I can't even remember where I've had it forever in my collection. And people ask me about it all the time. And so I brought it into our product development meeting one time and I was like, Corey, do you think we could, do you think our guy in India could make this for us? And he was like, I don't know, let's see. And so we sent over my only one. And so I was like, oh, please, which, bless. which I lost actually. No, I didn't lose. <laughs> like, Confession. FedEx lost. <laughs> oh no! I, I didn't even tell you. Uh -uh. Yeah, but they lost it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's a good thing you yeah. had it replicated. Yeah, yeah, and I literally like I got on the phone with the FedEx rep here in the United States, and I was like, "This is this will seriously like ruin a life. Like you have to find it." <laughs> I wouldn't have ruined it. My took, life, it took but... me six weeks to find uh -uh. it. Yeah, oh and then gosh. they they had to Special send it project. back because FedEx couldn't get it to the guy's address, so I had to like Stop. use DHL. Oh my god! It was a nightmare. Crazy. But, Shipping. but, but good right. news is it's in the collection now. Yes. No. Yeah. We have That's them so in rad. stock and we were able to recreate it, which is so fun. And it's been so fun to have a collection so that we can, we can do these things. Mm. So. And there's a lot of sweat and tears that went into that one. Cause I was freaking out for a minute. I was even telling Mari, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to tell Jess that I lost okay. this. I would have been okay. Okay. It's well, just fine. Yeah. I was still would have felt bad. You can lose anything of mine. It's okay. totally fine. Other than my kids. <laughs> yeah. Don't lose them. I love um, them. Yeah, totally. So that's um, creating conversation. Number eight is small moments. Mm. And that's um, living in a small space or an apartment. Things need to be functional as well. So how to style for those smaller, more intimate spaces? You know what, and I, this is a really good point, be it a small space or a large space really fast I want to touch on, is that in any room that you're working on, it's a library, it's an entry, it's built-ins in a family room. Like think about the function of it. Don't just put stuff to put stuff in your shelves or yeah. on a surface. Totally. Make it make sense for the function, function that you need on an entry table. You're going to have like a lamp, hopefully to greet you at the end of the day. You're going to have a bowl to like place your keys in. You might, you know, have a mirror to, you know, check yourself as you come in or out the door. So like, think about the, the key things that you need for the function of the space mm -hmm. in the built-ins. If you're a book collector, you'll have books in your libraries. If you're, you know... So be it a small space or a big space, I think this is like the number one faux pas and party foul of all styling is when it doesn't look like it fits the space. It's so frustrating when I go into a space. I'm like, why is that object there? That makes zero sense mm -hmm. on your coffee table. Like mm -hmm. it's dumb and it's on top of all these books. So ne I'll never ever get to your books. And mm -hmm. anyway, it's just, it's not believable. It's not livable. And like, you want to live in your spaces. So like be, be beautiful about it, but make sure there's a function to it. And I think, especially I've lived in small, a lot of small spaces throughout the years. And, um, it does, everything has to have like dual purpose. It has to be beautiful, but it has to be functional too. Like you don't have time to just like chilly dick around with like your open shelving in your kitchen and not have things that you actually use. Like on the daily, you make it look, you know, you have open shelving because you don't have enough cabinet spaces. You're going to put, you're going to style it with all your beautiful cups that you drink from every day and your stacks of plates and your bowls in that scenario, right? Mm -hmm. um, and just every, every surface, like think about the function and find the most beautiful like way to, to show that story of, of how you use the space. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, here's a little example of that uh, on my cocktail table. For some reason, I don't know if this happens to you guys and it's unexplainable, but we have five remote controls for one TV. Yeah. I can't explain it, Corey. That's, okay. that's my least favorite thing, to be honest with why, you. Why five remotes? And then I your think, kids run off with them There's anyway. like a sound bar situation. There's yeah. an Apple TV remote. There's a TV remote. There's a one that I have. It's huge. I don't know what it's for. Anyway, I've all, Adam, of, can you help define these all these remotes? remotes and so finally I was like, <laughs> I am going to, I got one of our beautiful Burlwood boxes and I put it next to my tray because even five remotes in a tray looks ridiculous. You know, it's just like, I don't know who lives here. Teenage boys. It looks crazy. Yeah. So I just a put a, a DJ. <laughs> yeah. So I put all, every single remote in there and you know, like extra headphones can go in there or whatever, but you felt like you like lost 20 pounds for your table. electronic device. Um, husband, check the box because check. everything <laughs> it's sitting right there on top of the table but inevitably like you know on Saturday when I'm sort of straightening things up all five remotes are out again so they all go back inside the box and I get to feel good about a well-styled cocktail table I also have a box on my side table and I'm so proud of my son he was just like where the remote's not in the box mom where did you put it 
it's not in the box. I was just like, son, thank you. It's over here. I did to carry it off. But thank you for knowing that that's where it goes. Yes. Train your children to organize and contain all the the chant that you don't. Yes. <laughs> Chant's a word I learned from you, Jesse Bennett. I know. From the I was, I was so lucky. We, um, we live in a, I was from a really small town and we went to school with, um, we had an Indian reservation near us. And so we went to so school cool. with all of these different um, tribes of Indians. We had Navajos, Paiutes, Utes. Um, I'm sure I'm missing one. So, um, what I learned in high school was all the swear words in <laughs> Navajo. Neat. So I taught, I taught those to Sue. Sure so did. You're welcome, everyone. Yep, so I digress. So, <laughs> I know. So gather your chant and put it in a box That's right. or contain it in a tray. We haven't even talked about trays. Yeah. Golly. Trays are a really, really great way to corral a lot of styling and to ground it. It kind of acts like an area rug yeah. in the room. And it's another really great um, way to kind of put things together. I think kitchen islands even can have a beautiful like wicker tray. Mm -hmm. Your cocktail table, I think is really a great place for trays, yep. nightstands. I don't know. Cocktail tables. I think we every, every, every surface, every like, surface. We love, yeah. We, we love, love a tray. tray. Yeah. Yeah. We and find, yeah we've, cl now. we've developed some really neat ones, a stingray tray and, mm -hmm. and some of those too, but even on your collections, I think that's another like cool thing. I've picked up neat trays, you know? Yeah. Having my bathrooms and whatnot. So definitely. That's great. Okay. Let's move into the senses. In styling, we kind of want to make sure and do our best to sort of hit on all of the senses. Um, like for instance, I talked about the candy bowl. So that would be like taste. You could put something in your mouth, which is fun. Generally a diffuser candle is in, yeah. is in a scene, I yeah. think. Yeah. And I think back to your tasting, it's also, again, it, it creates a feeling. It shows like whoever's there, it's an invitation. Like, please have, have candy. I've put it out for you, you know, mm -hmm. like, and so I think it's a really gracious, all these things, like these senses are not only for like you to appreciate and live with at the end of the day, but it's for, again, that storytelling, like, I know that Jess's favorite candy because she puts it in her candy dish and they're beautiful and there's they're metallic colored wrappings. And I'm like, where did you get these? These are beautiful. So even the candies that she's putting in that bowl are gorgeous. I'm like and a they little taste old lovely. grandma. The little yeah. LOL. I just love it. Uh -huh. Little old lady. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good. But I and think like the tasting thing mm -hmm. for sure. I love that. Yeah. A great playlist. Oh yeah. You know, I think that's yeah. really great. Like, especially if you... You know, if you're really dialing it in, like when you have time on a Saturday or Sunday to have music going, even music going, if you're styling is makes the chore like so much easier and more enjoyable. I feel like yeah. cooking with music on for sure. I so think much more enjoyable. I find myself if I don't have music on, I get lost in my thoughts and I start to think about like all the things I need to do. And I get like, it's a mm -hmm. panic, but when you put a song on or a playlist, yeah. like it takes you, you to a present, different place. I feel like mm -hmm. yeah, you can be in that moment yeah. and it does remind you. I know you make a playlist for every season and I love that because when you hear that song, it reminds you of that. I was driving my son to school and he has his, a little playlist called Nolan's Jams and he always puts it on and like a song came on and like, it makes you emotional because it was one that he like was, was having a hard time in, I digress guys, sorry, in first grade, but this song that like we put on every morning to pump him up, you know, to be like, you can do this. This is another day. Like that came on and like, it's music is so emotional. It it's is. so emotional. It takes you back mm -hmm. to you. Like when you fell in love that season, it takes you back to like when you had a child, when your child struggled, like all, all that, the senses are so powerful. And so when you can express that within your interior, like that's a feeling that's powerful. Yeah. So do not ignore this, this step. I agree for sure. So yeah, the playlist, I think the smell, you mentioned the diffuser mm -hmm. candles. I think the flicker, it's again, we call it a small fire, yeah. you know, that candle and that movement, you know, happening in a space. And I love, like I light a couple candles when I get home and different, like in like a public space and in my son's room where it's smelly, you know, but that's like part of our ritual at the end of the day, just like snuff the candles and it's just, it becomes part of your routine and it's a beautiful lifestyle. It's a beautiful way to live. Yeah. And it's just a candle. Mm -hmm. Like, but it's, there's something so magical about it, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, don't ignore the scent. Definitely. And obviously the visual yeah. and then the touch I think is like, you know, the pillows and the things that you're coming in contact with a great throw over your lap while you're watching, you know, TV or 
whatever you're doing. I just feel like I'm always cold. So I love having something nearby that's really comforting. Yeah. Yeah. I and like that. the tactile ca- um, pillows. We have these really great FOMO pillows right now that are mm-hmm. a little bit less tightly filled. And so they're kind of squishy and they're just so soft. The best to lay down on. Totally. I find that my husband like will put something behind it and then always use that FOMO pillow yep. to actually put his face on. It's lovely to lay on. Yeah, yeah it yeah, is. Too, it's so. a great experience. So yeah. yeah, engage those senses when you're styling. And then the last one, number 10 is photos, Mm -hmm. how to style with pictures and frames, the sizing, um, and kind of where to use it. I think, I mean, I'll start big. We've talked about this before. Lenny Kravitz, Brazilian farmhouse. Gosh darn it. I'm going to say it again. He does such a rad job of like, if you need large art and you're more of a graphic person and you don't, you know, he has like these massive scaled, beautifully like pictures of like his mother and his aunt, but they look so editorial. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what a beautiful like homage to like his family, but they look like they came straight from like a Vogue photo shoot Mm -hmm. or, you know, and, but it's personal, you know? And so like, he has like these voices in his head because of what he's putting on his wall, but he did it in a beautiful way. So I think like, whether it's like large format like that or in the bookshelves, like these candid black and white moments, I like the black and white Mm -hmm. images just because if you have all these different colored images, it starts to be that hang up that we talked about in episode one, where I stops at it because that kid was wearing a bright purple shirt. And that's all I can see when I look at your bookshelves. But, but sometimes you capture like the expression or the feeling or the wrinkles or the, you know, the, the Mm -hmm. time that it was taken when it is in black and white. And I, I love that. So I think that's a beautiful way to capture. Say I always go larger like in your frames, like I love like using our eight by 10 frames, Mm -hmm. you know, with like a five by seven, usually no smaller than a five by seven, unless it's something really precious and small that you found somewhere exciting. Um, Do you know what I think would be such a great gift? It would be for our parents to all give us a framed picture of them on their wedding day. Mm. You know, I love that. I have one of um, my in-laws on their wedding day and I'm not kidding you. They were like this iconic movie couple. They were so beautiful and handsome. And I, I haven't known them like, like that, the way that they were in their youth because I wasn't born yet, but it's just like such this um, time capsule moment captured and you get to see their love and their excitement before this whole life, you know, was able to, Um, happen. Right. And then finally, like toward the middle of their life, they have these kids and then they raise them up. And then here comes these daughters-in-law who's me. And I'm like, ah, it's just like this amazing magical moment that I didn't get to be a part of. And same thing with my parents. I love looking at pictures of them. My dad looks like a Ken doll, you know, and my mom looks like Jackie O or something. She's just so beautiful. And the styles then were just, I don't know. They do you feel like they're magical and kind of iconic. They are. I just, I just love them. And so, um, I just feel like we, we would all love like an eight by 10 of our parents' wedding day on a shelf somewhere. I think it's so interesting because right now we have like, our cameras are always on us. We have like tens of thousands of photos on our, on our phones. And back then it was just like film, you know, like they captured this like so perfectly this one time and that was it. One, you know, out of this whole reel of, of film. And like, I'm like, that's magic. Yeah. That's magical. And I think it's so cool for our kids to see that. So I bet Jane loves seeing And I feel like they threw rice back then. And so that texture in the black and white photo is so beautiful. And yeah. And then like the old cars, you know, that were parked in the background and it's just like such a very Ralph Lauren moment. And it's meaningful. I feel like people then, like your average person took more time to like get ready and get dressed and- um, you know, so yeah, like had seeing, their hair up in pink curls the night yeah, before. And, yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite gifts that I've ever given someone is it was the Christmas after my wife's grandma died and she was like that. She was like, it was in the fifties and, mm-hmm. um, you know, she was just very like put together and her and her husband, my grandpa or my wife's grandpa, they had a, a picture of them when they were young and they were like, you know, in their, in their best and I had, um, a friend of, or you gave me his number. His name is Zach. He's an artist, a local artist, yeah. but I had him do like a three by five, three by five feet sketch cool. of that photo mm, and rad. gave it to her. And yeah, it's, it's a rad it's piece. Special. Yeah, so, that's so really special. cool. I have this one of my grandparents and it's the cutest. And like, he was an army guy. Anyway, it's of them in a photo booth. 
Oh. And it is like the most precious yeah. thing, but it, it does, it takes you to, you know, a different time, be it like your grandparents or even your children or, you know, I think it's just, it's so lovely to revisit mm-hmm. those moments. And Definitely. it I, feels like where you came from kind yeah, of, yeah. you know what totally. I mean? That's like the origin the of, of who you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have a daughter in college and I keep like a five by seven picture of her when she was probably, I don't know, seven the cutest. Yeah. We were Just in, we were shopping in anthropology and she put on this little bucket hat and, um, she just like the look in her eyes was so cute. I happened to have my cell phone and snapped a picture of her and I have that blown up in a five by seven in a frame and it's at my makeup table and I just miss her cause she's at college and my other mm-hmm. daughter is still at home, but I get to still see her in that little time capsule of a moment. Yeah. And I think, I think those pictures are just, I don't know. They also evoke emotion. They make it feel like it's your home. It's your moment. Mm -hmm. And I think they're important to put out and there's myriads and myriads of frames and styles and looks that you can definitely capture, Mm -hmm. you know, your style with them. I like graduating heights with frames, having an eight by 10 and a five by seven together. Um, I even have a little teeny tiny wallet size of me when I was tiny, like we were living in Oregon and it's like kind of a sun bleached picture. You know, those pictures where you can't, it's just kind of faded and it's just like, it's, I'm just so no little. Filter. That's just the way it was. Which yeah, is so magical. totally. And I have a tiny, tiny little frame for it and it sits at my secretary and it's just so darling. It's so yeah. cute because I was tiny and that picture's tiny that I even love the tiny scale of that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely include those photos. Um, there's some people that have so many photos that they could fill entire top of a grand piano with them. And those are fun moments to sit and stare at. And I wouldn't even dare touch that styling because no. it's just so precious it's and personal and it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. And then others of us that are trying to figure out how do we take these phones off of our photo, off of our phones? How do we take these photos off our yeah. phones and print them mm-hmm. and put them into our life? You know? And I think those times become more and more precious. Like maybe for me where one of my kids is already leaving and I'm like, Oh, I need my kids around me still because they're, they're gone, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's a way to do it. But we, um, in the home that we were styling yesterday, we have our acrylic book easel, right? Which we love using that mm-hmm. book easel cradle. Right? Yeah. Anyway, it's really rad. It allows you to open up a book, right? Mm-hmm. And keep it open all the time. Um, we were styling this gal's office. And again, all of her children have left. She has like this one little like grandbaby. And so we did print off a picture of Dot and put it in this teeny tiny little dotted frame and made sure to include that. But I was like rummaging through some of her stuff to see like what is what personal things, treasures could I put up here that, that would mean something and make this really emotional. Yeah. And I found the photo album, which I think all of our parents probably have an actual printed photo album. I have one too. Right? Oh, good for you. For when I was married. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually awesome. do too. Yeah. <laughs> I totally do. <laughs> anyway, we both were old. Anyway, so but we pulled out this and it's like, they're from the seventies. Like he has like this blonde golden mustache. She's like, looks beautiful anyway. But we put that and we opened it up on the cradle in her, in her office. And she texted us last night, like when she's finally like going through her house and like seeing all these things and like feeling all these moments and memories. And she's just like, this couldn't be more perfect. And it like, it was emotional for her. And you know that like that, I can't imagine that being replaced with a book. Yeah. You know, like, I'm like, I've never, like, that's such a cool way to use the cradle, Mm -hmm. you know, is to have something like that, that people will actually flip through and be like, oh my gosh, look at your hair. Do you remember that sofa? Do you remember like this moment? It's just, it's such, it's such a, like such a memory for, and that's how all of our homes should be. They should be telling our story. And Mm so it was cool to feel that yesterday in that space. That's so great. Um, so, um, one last little miscellaneous item is that when we are styling one really, um, just kind of commonly known thing is that we generally love an odd number. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we also kind of, we graduate height. So in the end, we sort of start to make kind of triangles out of some of the things, um, depending on what it is that we're styling. Maybe it's a mantle, maybe it's like the top of a upright piano or something like that. Um, maybe it's a kitchen Island, not really a cocktail table so much, or even, I don't know, sometimes a built in, you can make some of those triangles, graduating heights, you know, low, medium, high fives, you know, just those, I does love odd numbers. Totally. So, and if at any rate, um, if you're overwhelmed, those are always tricks that work. Can I say something really fast though? Yeah. 
I worked like a long time ago at this like space that this place that the supervisor would take us around and be like, this needs to be styled this way. And this needs to be styled this way. It was the worst, oh, the worst. No. And it was just like three, like matching candlesticks. It was like one, two, three, you know, and they were all like barley twists. And like, this was like circa oh, 2005, no. maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. And I just like, I have such a like oh. negative memory of that. I was just like this, this <laughs> level of three of just don't do three matching things. It's too predictable. You guys. Yeah. Like maybe you have two and then you have like one kind of thing, just kind of like meandering off and effortlessly looks like it found a place, but don't have three candlesticks with a barley twist with a candle, with a white wick. Don't do it. I hate <laughs> it. So I hate it so much. And so that's a part of just like, yes, it's a rule. We love odds, but make it feel effortless. Don't make it feel predictable. Like, yeah. like somebody like you just, place that there and it's one, two, three, and they're equally like distance from each other. That looks fake. Yeah. It's not believable. Mm -hmm. So that's good. I hated that job. <laughs> it was the worst. I'm, I'm like, glad, I'm glad you did Sue. Cause yeah. otherwise we wouldn't get to work together. I know. So thanks yep. for hating that job. I sure did. Thanks yeah. Josh, for opening a kick-ass store. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thanks so much for joining us today, guys on our 10 principles of styling, get out there, get those shelf style, the tables, whatever it is that you're doing and make it look believable. And memorable. And memorable. Like you. Yes. We'll catch you next time. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 